Hi little sloths, welcome to my mukbang. Thank you so much for being here. Today I'm making something very special for you guys and I'm gonna show you step by step how I make it. Now, I'll just come out and say it. I was gonna say, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm making jajamyeon. Now, my Korean friends, my Asian friends, I'm probably not saying this pr properly. Jajamyeon, jajamyeon, which is basically black bean noodles and you either put it over top of rice. Rice is traditionally done, but also noodles. So, oh. This is Mr. Noodle. Speak it up, Noodle. Say hello to the sloths. Say hello to the sloths. So he's gonna be joining me today, just in the beginning, because I don't. He's only gonna be here for like a hot second, because I don't think he. Can, no, I don't think he can eat a lot of this. Can he, Mr. Noodle? No, no, he can't. So, anyways, let me show you step by step how to make jajamyeon, the black bean paste. Everything. Oh, it's just. I'm really excited. And then we can eat. Hello, welcome to my recipe of my jajamyeon. Jajamyeon black bean noodle. I just got back from a 20 minute or 30 minute bike ride. I don't remember which is with. Came back to I couldn't go up the hill, but I think it was about 20 minutes. This is my bike. Fancy, fancy. All right, my cooking sloths. If you are able to buy the black bean paste from your local Asian store, then please do it because uh, the bean paste is time consuming and messy. Anyways, step one, soak the black beans overnight and be sure to do this beforehand. Now on recipe day, the first official step is to strain out the beans and give them a nice wash and then plop them into a pot. Add some water to the pressure cooker, put it onto the stove and let it cook for about 20 to 30 minutes. Step two, peel three medium sized potatoes and let them sit in water so that they stay nice and white. Now the recipe calls for pork belly, but instead of pig, we are using this amazing vegetarian ham that's made from quinoa and beets. Seriously, it tastes exactly like ham and so scary. Anyways, chop up the pig into little cubes and place him aside. Now peel a medium sized zucchini, green or yellow, doesn't really matter, one large onion and half a cucumber. The cucumber will act as garnish when we finish. Oh, it's time to check on the beans. The black beans are really troublesome to cook, you guys. Yeah, they still need time. So back they go, pop. Okay, now it's time to boil water for the noodles. We're using quinoa noodles here since they're thicker, but you can use any noodle, really, pasta, spaghetti, doesn't matter. Next step, strain the beans and add them to the blender and be sure to add a little of the black water. Add a drop of vinegar and blend until smooth. Now carry those beans over to the pressure cooker and cook the paste. We're also adding some plantain powder, but you can use potato starch. You'll know when the paste is ready when you hear a nice bubbling sound like a witch's cauldron. <laughs> okay, the bean paste is thick. Now take that back to the blender, add oil, add sugar, and blend one final time. Now add the pasta to the boiling water. This should take just about 10 minutes. You guys know how to boil pasta. And once finished, strain the pasta by adding a little cold water to it to give it an extra crunch. Add a lot of oil to the stir fry pan. Now add your pork <clears throat> veggie meat over and stir this around until crunchy. You must stir continually or that oil will be popping everywhere. So whether you use pork or veggie meat, you'll notice a difference in color and texture. Remember those peeled ingredients? Well, first chop up the potatoes into small little cubes and put one cup aside. You're gonna have to measure it out somehow. Now, do the same for the zucchini and the onion. Chip, chop, chippy, chop, chop, here we go. Make one cup of each and put those aside as well. At this point, the meat should be finished. Strain out the oil, yeah. Ew, we're not eating that. And first, add the potato. Stir the potato with the pork for exactly one minute and then add the rest of the veggies. It smells really, really, really nice. It smells just like Chinese food. Ooh, really nice. Okay, now since we aren't using store-bought paste, which again, I recommend you do, we're adding soy sauce to make the paste darker and more flavorful. Lastly, my sloths, we combine all the ingredients and they do the cha-cha-cha together in the pot, let them dance until they're fully mixed, and then add two cups of water. Adds a little more potato starch and a spoonful of saffron and let this cook for about 10 minutes. Once finished, the water will evaporate and it'll be this nice black thick paste. And here we are, the jajamyeon. The jajar, it sounds like jajar binks. Jajamyeon, jajar binks. If you guys don't know, he's from Star Wars. This looks incredibly delicious. Oh, Mr. Noodle's trying to take a peek, you should eat, yes. Oh, look at this, it looks so good. Oh, come back over here, I just don't know. Come on. Oh, he wants some noodles. Oh, over here, I have my noodles. Now, 
Like you saw in the recipe, I'm using two different kinds of noodles. I'm using the quinoa noodles just because they're thicker, and I think they'll absorb the, the black sauce a little bit better. And I have the regular angel hair. Now, this is starting to get a little cool, so but this is still hot. So, let's get mixing. All right, I'm so happy you're here, and I'm so happy to be eating this for you. By the way, sloths, I got the, um, I got the background all done. What do you think of this? Is this a nice little setup? So, first, you take your noodles. <gasps> I told you they were cold. Oh. oh, wow. Okay. So, we're gonna kind of break it up. It looks like a... It's only been sitting for 10 minutes and already it's solidified. Oh my gosh. Just wish I know how much I know what else. So I'm gonna do something that, you know, is not very respectable, but I'm gonna use my hands. They are clean. I have clean hands, and I'm just gonna like tear this apart. Now I could go down. Oops, I don't wanna break them though. No. <sighs> okay. This is gonna be nice. Nice. Oh, got the angel hair. See, they didn't even mix. They're like polar opposites over here. That the keen this is my first time having quinoa pasta. Now, I know that's not traditionally done, but I don't have access to rice noodles down where I live, so. All right, I think it's a, a loosened up. Now, my favorite part, we take this sauce. I've already had like, I licked my fingers and it's really nice. Mmm, smash good. Jaja ja Binks. So, I'm gonna put this in like this. How am I gonna, no, I, oh, I'm just, I'm spilling it everywhere. You guys, so, let me try to, okay, like this. Oh, look at that. I know Mr. Noodle's gonna want a bite. Mr. Noodle's gonna want a bite. And since we didn't use real pork, we used vegetarian pork, veggie pork. It's just made out of quinoa and beets, which means Mr. Noodle can have a bite. Aren't you excited? Gosh, I know you're excited. You want a piece of noodle? Noodle. Noodle, kind of. Kind of, okay. So. Now, we take this out of the way. And now, we mix. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite part. Okay, hopefully this mix nice and well. Mix it on up. Do I have too much pasta? I don't know. Maybe I do. I like to eat a lot of food, so maybe. Oh, mixing, mixing. So we're mixing this up just like this. Oh, it's so cold. Okay, we just put this into the oven, you guys. I'll show you a real quick lickety split. There it is in there. Let me put the little flame on the bottom. <gasps> okay. Oh, it has a light. Now, traditionally, you're not supposed to bake your jajamyeon. Oh my gosh. The Koreans right now are pulling their hair out and saying, no, what are you doing? But it took a long time. That process was like an hour and trial and error with the paste and everything. So I want it to be nice and hot. Okay, here's the jajamyeon. A little bit longer. And I'm done. Here's the jajamyeon. Okay, so it's out of the oven. Baked jajamyeon. I know this, this is like a disaster. I went on my bike ride. I got up at, oh, what time was it? I woke up actually at like 3 a.m. And I was like, oh, morning time. And I heard the roosters down the street and I was like, that means the sun's coming up in like 30 minutes or so, because when roosters start barking or cuckooing, you usually have about 30 minutes. Well, for whatever reason, they were having a conversation at 3 a.m. and I realized it was 3 a.m., went back to sleep. Then I woke up at 7, or no, 6.30-ish, and I went on my bike ride for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, like you saw, and now it's like, 10 a.m. and I'm like, I need food, I need food. I should have just snacked on some sugar or something, because we're kind of, we're kind of playing, the, ouch! We're kind of, um, doing this by by ear. So I'm gonna finally mix this around a little bit more. Oh my gosh. This is so thick. Oh, I am starving. How's your day, everyone? Please let me know what you're eating with me. This is a very special occasion. And I got some stories for you, so get comfortable. Um, oh, I'm flopping it everywhere. You know, I thought about making this in front of y'all in the in the griddle, but you know, with the oil popping up and but you know, cooking that that pig meat, which is really just beets and quinoa for us, oil was splattering everywhere. It would have been a crazy mess up here. So, all right, this looks really nice and mixed, doesn't it? This looks good. Can you believe all this is gonna go in my stomach? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 
mix it up. This is this is like a workout. Oh, I'm like riding the bike, holding onto the handlebars, going down the hill. <laughs> that hurts my hands. It, it's like a muscle tension. So already, I'm having soreness in my hands, and now just mixing this, it's like a workout for my shoulders. Shows you how out of shape I am. Okay, so almost done mixing this. Let me have my first bite of this. Goodness, goodness, jajamyan. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. It tastes like I'm eating like bacon, bacon pasta, bacon pasta. Because of the because of the ham, you know, you're supposed to use pork, and what I use tastes just like pork. I'm telling you. Oh, this is so. Mmm. Black bean noodles. Mmm. No. I don't even taste the difference between the regular spaghetti, <laughs> which a lot of you, if you try this recipe and you're not in Korea or if you don't have access to a Korean place like me, there's no Chinatown down here, so. Well, can you get them in Chinatown? Do Chinese people, I need to be some, I need to be educated. Do Chinese people like jajamyeon? I thought it's just a South Korean favorite, you know? I want to know. Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't taste the difference between the quinoa pasta. I only used both of them just because, like you saw in the recipe. Mmm. I wanted more pasta. This is over 2,000 calories, by the way. I calculated it. The pasta, this much oil, <laughs> the meat, the vegetables, the beans. This is like 2,400 something or something like that. It's a lot. It's a, it's a big meal. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's so messy. But that's okay, you guys don't mind, do you? Let me get a napkin. And I got my napkin. I should put it as a bib, because I'm very messy. Oh my gosh, this is just so dope. I'm really happy now. I was kind of freaking out saying, you know, how hungry. Oh, oh my gosh, I forgot to add the garnish. All right, so traditionally you add some. This here is chopped cucumbers. Fresh cu- oh, I spilled some. Cucumber, chop it up into fine little spots and you just throw that on top. Maybe, I don't know if you're supposed to use that much, but you just put a bunch on top to give it some, some garnish. <laughs> I think. All right, let me move this a little closer. Mmm. Oh my gosh, this is so filling. Mmm. So let me tell you guys a little story. Did I already burp? No, I didn't. Ouch! This is, this was really close to my face. I, my first time ever trying this was last year. Has it been a year? Um, March of 2015, 2016. Yeah, because this is 2016 of March, I'm pretty sure. I have to count on my fingers because I'm really bad at math. But basically, you know, almost a year ago, and I had it with my friend Mommy Tang, and she took me to a Korean restaurant. It was an authentic Korean restaurant that she liked to take her family to. And I remember, it seriously, it's one of the best times of my life, just all the food I ate. It was like an introduction to new foods for me, because a lot of you guys, if you're in America, this ain't American food. This ain't no cheeseburger or pizza. This is Korean. And so, you know, this was new for me and the whole experience being at the restaurant, I filmed everything. It just, it made me really, really excited and happy and satisfied in the tummy wummy because this, I, I remember going with her and first time going like this and mixing the sauce because they bring out the sauce and the noodles or the rice, but for me it was noodles. They bring it out separately and you're supposed to mix it yourself. It's like playtime. You mix it. It's fun. And I remember doing that and I just had this smile on my face and it was just... It was an amazing, amazing time. So that was my first time ever having it. And ever since then, 
you know, seven months ago, I, at least I think it was that long ago, I've never had it again. And then I decided, why not I make it? I remember, I have such fond memories of it. Mmm. Mmm. I'm so happy that I warmed it up. Hashtag baked, I baked. Hashtag baked jajamyeon. <laughs> but you know, seriously, when it's nice and warm, it's so much, oh, so good. Mmm. Mm -hmm. So good. Oh, this is so good. I hope you guys make this recipe. It would have been so much easier with just buying, just getting some black bean paste, but we don't, we can't have that here. Okay, one more big bite. Mmm. <laughs> you know what? This reminds me of dates. This is like date, you know, pasta. In Italian, uh, in Italy, in the United States, you know, pasta is like a date food. You take your, your hubby or your wife or your girl or your boy and you take them out to someplace nice and pasta is always on the menu. I've never understood why. I remember asking my, my mom and I was like, if spaghetti is so messy, why do people use it for fancy times? You know, for dates. But they do because it's satisfying. They're, you associate certain foods with certain memories and certain experiences. For example, like yesterday, I ate 10 hot dogs in front of you. And then all of a sudden I started thinking about 4th of July and going to the tailgate, the, the pregame parties at the um, in the parking lot, the stadium, eating the hot dogs, going to the circus. You know, all these memories that food helps you associate and reconnect with times of your life. So this is making me think of my date. Let me tell you about my first date. My first like major, major date. I remember, what was her name? Eva. And uh, we went to the movie theaters and this was, excuse me, I was, how old was I? I was in middle school, so probably seventh grade. It was my first like major girlfriend. Or, or was it Kendall? Eva or Kendall, one of the two. And I remember my parents didn't want me to go to the movie theaters without adult supervision. My parents were strict. Um, are Koreans known for being strict parents, by the way? I don't even know. My dad was the soft teddy bear, but my mom had the, the cast iron. She was the whip. You know, what she says happens. She wore the pants in the family. And so anyways, I wasn't allowed to go to the movie theaters without adult supervision. So Eva's mom had to sit behind us. And what movie were we even watching? I don't even remember. It's one of those things, it's like you go to the movies if you're your first date and you're like, heart's fluttering, you're so excited to be with that person. You don't even pay attention to what you're watching. At least I did it. So I remember sitting there and I'm like really nervous and like put your hand down, try to hold her hand. But her mom's right behind us so I can't like make any moves. It's... But I only bring this up because afterwards we went out for some pasta. Or beforehand, it was beforehand. So we were in the movie theater with that nice tummy full of pasta. And I remember um, my, okay, well that was a girl. Her name was Eva. And then I went to a boy and his name was Sam. <laughs> And I remember, now this isn't even pasta talk, but let me tell you about one of my first dates with him. Mmm. Mmm-hmm. This is so good. So Sam, he was like a few years older than me, one or two. I was in high school at the time. This was sophomore year, I believe, or junior year, I think sophomore. Or was it Junior? One of the two. And he lived like an hour away in Reading, Pennsylvania. And I was in Hershey. And so like he had a car, I didn't have a car. He had a license, I didn't have a license. He had freedom, I didn't. <laughs> With my strict mother, my strict mother, you know? So anyways, I remember eventually she allowed me to like go out and do stuff. I mean, it was still very like, you have to call to check in every two hours so I know where you are. Oh, okay, so we'll go out Friday, the next Friday comes. Well, you went out last Friday. That's enough for this month. You know, that kind of strictness. So anyways, I remember he took me to an, a Mexican restaurant and he ordered a chicken chim chimichang chimichanga. Ch chimichanga? I think it's called chimichanga. Chimichanga. And it's just like chicken and cheese and it's wrapped up. And that was my first time ever having a chip, chip, chimmy chimichanga. Chicken chimichanga. I don't know what I'm saying. Help. Uh, and um, yes, 
that food, every time I eat, think of Mexican food, not every time, but a lot of the times, I think of going to the Mexican restaurant with him. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, this is really good. Mm hmm I've had some memorable, but you know, I didn't really date much growing up, or when I was already growing up. You know, in college, I, I had one boyfriend. That was my, you know, I went out to the bars, to the club, and had fun and stuff, but I never, like, date dates. I didn't really know. And I kind of, you know, obviously I am in love. <clears throat> and you guys know Orlin and everything, but sometimes it's like, what if this happened, or what if this happened, and where would I be today if time didn't take its, its course for me how it is today? Does that even make sense? So yeah, I remember Travis, this was in college, I was a freshman, and he was in the Navy. And on um, one of our dates, he took me to the Navy Harbor, which is in Washington, D.C., because I was going to the Catholic University of America, which is in Washington, D.C. and. Um, he took me there, he drove, he picked me up, it felt all fancy, and he rented out a hotel for the week, it was over the weekend, and of course I should have been studying or practicing my violin, but I didn't, and you know, it was so worth it. And I, excuse me, I remember, this was before we were officially, you know, together, monog monogamous, and this was like the date that led up to that night, and Oh my gosh, I remember posting on Facebook and making all my friends, all my girls, all my girlfriends like cry happy tears. Oh, Nicholas, I'm so excited for you. Because I put out this little thing where I talked about how he asked me. And since he was in the Navy, he wore uh, tags, Navy tags that said his name and his rank and his boat and all that kind of stuff. And I remember I was sitting on my dorm bunk room bed and he was there. And this was before or after the date. I, I forget which way, but I remember he took it off his neck, and he's like, I wear this every day, and he put it on my neck and said, will you be my boyfriend? And you know, I wore his tags, and since he was in the Navy, we had to be separate for a lot, and he was stationed in Norfolk, Norfolk, which is Virginia, and it was like a four hour drive to Washington, D.C. So I saw him like two times a month, three times a month, if I was lucky, sometimes once a month. Um, so I, I, I carried around his name tags to remember him. It was just this cute little thing and I... <clears throat> Anyways, so one of our dates, we went to the Navy Yard. Mmm. Mmm. I'll never forget, you guys. I will never forget. Ah, oh, I remember so many vivid details. It's like... It's like a book, it's like something's been painted, a brushed in, into my mind. And I remember, first of all, getting there, his car had this musk smell to it. I remember sitting on the, the edge, you know, in the passenger seat, watching, you know, watching the stripes go down along the highway and seeing his little scent bottle or his, this little, it's a tree, what do they call it? Air fresheners in the car just dangle as we're going down the highway. You know, I rarely left campus via car. I would only leave via metro. And I didn't even do it that often because it was just expensive. Um, <laughs> it's true. The Washington DC Metro is so expensive. How many of you guys are in DC? But anyways, so just being in a car was so different for me. And I remember we go to the Navy Harbor. I think that's what it's called, the Navy Harbor. And we go to this restaurant and we go up on the, the second floor and it's along the water. It's this beautiful, it was beautiful. The tablecloth was white. And I remember we ordered pasta. We both did, and oh, it was just, it was like when your first like time slurping in front of someone, and you, you know, your heart's fluttering because you're attracted to them, You be, have, being in their presence makes you a little nervous. So I'm over here like, oh, oops, <laughs> you know, like very polite. And I know I'm not the only one, don't you dare say anything about me, you guys know, you, you go through that too. And so we had our pasta. And I remember afterwards, just to like digest, we walked alongside the water. And it was nighttime and the moon was bright. And I remember the moon's reflection was on the water and I would just look at the ripples slow, you know, it's not an, it is an ocean, but it's a harbor. So it's like very calm, like a bay. And I remember watching the ripples softly go up and down, up and down and seeing the moon reflect. And we're walking, it was chilly. This was like, 
October or something. So we both had our jackets, but it was a comfortable cold. You know, that crispness, that spark in the air from cool weather. I mean, I don't get to experience that where I am because I'm where it's hot in the tropics, but up north, it's beautiful. And so we have our jackets and we're holding hands and I'm watching the sun and I'm looking at the boats and you couldn't see stars, but we could see the moon. And that was so beautiful. And I'm walking, digesting this belly of pasta. Just so comfortable. And for dessert, we ended up getting ice cream. We got little tubs of Ben and Jerry. <sighs> the water's dripping from the roof. Every time, all my buck bucks. So we went to go get ice cream. And I believe it was Ben and Jerry's because they were the small little expensive things. And I would tell them, like, I would never ever, you know, if I was paid, I would get go to Turkey Hill. No, Turkey Hill or Giant and get the tubs, the generic tub, for $7. It's like half a gallon. Why spend $5 on a, a, a bite, you know? I, I never understood like fancy ice cream, like that Hip Hofenschmaffen, that German one, Hofenpuff, Hofen. Mm. So we got our ice cream, right? And then we go on back to the hotel. Don't worry, this is G-rated. If your kids are with you, it's okay. Keeping the details out of this one. Well. We sit in bed and we eat our pints of, our things of ice cream, and we watch The Notebook. Now, he was like, girl, you've never seen The Notebook? Who, where have you been? And I'm like, no, it's not my cup of tea. I like really sad and dramatic and like dark films. Like, I don't want to see some lovey-dovey stuff. And we watched it, and at the very end, I remember saying, this was not a good movie. This was stupido. And he... He, he got mad at me. He's like, how could you say this? It's beautiful. He was tearing up. I was kind of like, eh. And usually I'm the cryberry. Crybaby, not the cryberry. Um, I hear a good piece of music and I start crying. Oh my gosh, I'm so emotional when it comes to art. When I saw Black Swan in New York City, right across from Juilliard at the Lincoln Center, I sat there and I saw the music and the, oh, I ended up crying at the end. I watched Netflix. I get teary-eyed from House of Cards. That's such a suspenseful show. Or um, Orange is the New Black. Violent scenes make me cry. I remember crying at Beauty and the Beast when the wolves went after the beast. And my dad was like, we know. We've known since you were two. Now we know. That, that, you know, I was like five years old and crying. And my sister's here eating popcorn, enjoying herself. And I'm crying about the big bad wolf, the beasts, and the wolves. So anyways, I should have been the one crying from the notebook, but I didn't, it didn't touch me. It didn't pull those strings. And there goes my bib. So, yeah, lots of movies make me cry. Oh my gosh, House of Cards. How many of you like House of Cards? It's intense. It's not appropriate. It is not a children's show. So, excuse me, it's so dark. It's beautifully filmed, the acting's great. I love the, the theme song. Bum bum ba bum yada da 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 and then the strings come in yeah and then you have that opera lady at the end it's very intense I got Orlin hooked on that first Orange is the New Black we ended up watching all three seasons back to back together. House of Cards, he watched the new, the latest one with me. And now he's hooked and we can't wait for February or whenever it comes out again. Uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, my napkin, gross. In Espanol, we say gas. We say gas. Though a lot of you probably think I'm gas, so hopefully you've... I don't know. Wow, this is very filling. This is... Uh, how much am I going to eat? I think I'll eat half of it. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm having to like wipe my nose. This fork's big. I need to use this one. I do have this one. Look at that. Appropriate bites. <laughs> this light is a little cast in shadows. Mm. 
You know, I cleaned the table and everything. And already, it's messy. <laughs> I took off the, the tablecloth that's down below. <clears throat> so it can help absorb some sound because I'm in a furnitureless house, basically. Furnitureless room. <clears throat> well, this is furniture. I'm very happy. This is plastic, and I love it. It's very good for earthquakes, says Orlin. He says that um, wooden tables will snap before these, these plastic ones, which surprises me. I thought it would be the other way around, but he says, no, these, these are better to, you know, because these kind of welt where the wooden ones snap. So if the house comes falling down, I'm going to be under here. Mmm. Oh my gosh, I'm thinking about House of Cards. For those of you that don't know the show, it's available on Netflix for free if you pay the monthly thing, so it's not really for free. But, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's basically a, a political, fictional story about the president and all the, the stuff that goes on behind the scenes in the White House. And you really see how dir dirty, dirty and dark it is. And everyone's doing their own thing for their own personal gain. They don't really care about the people. And there's a lot of terrible stuff. And, you know... It's in my head, and <clears throat> I'm just thinking, like, how much of that could be a reflection of the reality, you know? It can't be too far from fiction, can it? Obviously, the governments aren't perfect. I mean, I'm eating a South Korean food. No, that's North Korea. I was going to say, their government. But then again, it's like growing up in the United States, living in a democracy. If I was raised and born in a communist country, maybe I would know no different, and maybe I would be happy and content. But then again... Why are so many North Koreans fleeing? You know, that's a very sad situation, North Korea. Um, I watched this, what was her name? I got, see, talking about crying again, I cried and Orlin was like, you're such a baby. You know, just hard love, hard teasing, you know? Some, some of you guys he's, says he's mean. He just gives, give me a hard time because like I cry over little things. Hard love, my mom was definitely tough love. But you do it out of love. So anyways, I was watching this, it was called TED Talk. Google it, open up and, excuse me, a new tab and type in TED Talk North Korea. And hopefully one of the first things that pop up, it got like a million something views. It was this woman that escaped North Korea and she brought her parents and they had to go through Tibet and Thailand and Laos and all these, Mag Magno not Mag Magnolia? Is that the name of the country? Magnolia. Oh my gosh, if I'm getting it wrong, this is gonna be really embarrassing. Magnus or, anyways, I remember at the end just hearing her whole journey and her story and like wanting to leave and have this sense of freedom like made me teary eyed and she got a standing ovation and it's a little hard to understand her but I applaud that she was speaking English you know so well I can't speak Spanish very well so boo give me thumbs down for that so I it was just you know I know that there are parts of North Korea that are open to tourists, but you have to be supervised and Jean Jean, no, <laughs> not Jean Jean Yan, the leader, it's Jean Jean Yan of North Korea. What's his name? Jung Kim Il, Jung, Jung Kim Im Kim, something. Oh my gosh, I'm butchering the name. I'm so sorry to anyone from North or South Korea. <sighs> but then again, you probably think our, our presidents have funny names too. Bush, you know, like Clinton. <laughs> Clinton, you would start saying other words. I don't know. Anyways, what am I saying? I don't know. Yes, there are parts that you can visit, and Orleans fascinated about visiting. You know, to see a society, a structure that's run so differently from the, from many other, not all the world, but many other parts of the world. Um, I just, I don't know. Maybe one day we will visit, and I can have some real Jean Mmm. -hmm. You know, it's such a small world. Thinking of Koreans, because I believe this person's Korean, I, I might be wrong, and if you're not Korean and you're watching this, forgive me. I believe her last name was Kim, or Lee, L-I. Anyways, I got this message on Facebook from a girl that said, I, I just watched your other mukbang. I loved it, I love, I eat with you all the time, I'm a fan. Thank you so much. I, I wish I knew her name. I should pull it up on my phone, but my phone's not charged. But she was like, and then you started talking about Hershey. I went to Hershey High School, or my cousins went to Hershey High School, something along those lines. And she said, I might have known you. And then she sends me a second message. This is before I saw the first one. I saw both at the same time. And she says, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out because I think I have seen you before. 
Um, did you ever do Messiah College Orchestra Camp? Did you ever do Hershey Symphony? Um, like, or no, Hershey Festival of Strings? Like, oh my gosh, I remember you, I think, or one of the honors, or maybe Lebanon Valley Honors Orchestra, something, you know, it's a small world, the, the music world. And it's just so funny that, you know, I've kind of, that's my past, you know. I wish I was still performing, but I'm not. I'm not performing right now. And so that was my life. That was everything, you guys. And it's like an old chapter. It's like if you change your jobs, you move to a different state, and you decide to start putting videos onto YouTube. And then you have one of your viewers send you a message saying, I worked with you back in that old state at that old job. Small world, it's like now you're watching me eat food? Why? Why? I don't know why. Do you know? So I just, it's such a cool feeling. This is, it's a small, small world. Mm. This is so, huh. I think this is all the oil. Like I had probably this much of oil in here. And that right there is like 500, 600 calories of oil. Because one spoonful, one tablespoon is 120, right? Hmm, so full. Mm. The bacon's the best part. This pork. Mm. I'm so delicious. Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. That's Orlin upstairs. Every time he hears a bang, he assumes that I'm in trouble or I broke something or I fell down because I'm very clumsy. Mm. Sounds like mac and cheese. You know when you stir mac and cheese? Well, now all you hear is a bus. <clears throat> So anyways, you guys, this is really delicious. How many of you are still here? Mmm. Delicious. Mmm. 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 Always spilling stuff. You know, I can't believe that Christmas is like right around the corner. I feel like, what did I even do last year for Christmas? Where was I? I was in Florida, probably, yes. And I remember Orland's mother gave me socks and a shirt for Christmas. And I don't think Orland and I exchanged gifts. Um, we were even tighter on money back then. This year for Christmas, I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm assuming we're, yes, we'll be here, most likely. Um, Christmas, such a nice gift. What is that? It's like a noise over there. And you know, excuse me, Christmas is a, you know, one of my favorite times of year. Mm. And I only bring this up because now I'm chewing on this, this bacon, this pork. And I remember my mom, back in the day when all the family would get together for Christmas, she would make like this meatloaf. I never liked the meatloaf though. And you know, I was open about it, I was honest. Eventually she stopped cooking completely. She's like, well, I'm, I'm done. No one in the family wants me to cook, so I'm not gonna cook. Mmm, this is good though. But while I was in the kitchen, dicing up the cucumbers, the smell made me think of my mom's um, tomato cucumber salad. And the ingredients are so simple. You take raw tomato, raw cucumber, some water, some vinegar, some sugar, and put that all together, mix it around. It's like this, oh, an oil? No, I think the vinegar. Yeah, the vinegar and the oil. Yeah, because you see it's up. You see the little separate bubbles. Vinegar does the same thing with oil as oil. It does not mix with water. And so it's like this sweet, fresh. You know, every time we got fresh cucumbers and tomatoes, she would make that. Mm. Mm. Speaking of Christmas, one of my favorite foods of the holidays wasn't a food. It was a drink, and it was called eggnog. Now, I don't eat eggs. Um, I stopped eating eggs a while ago, and I just feel better not eating them, but however, that drink, <gasps> I would be lying to you and be like, no, I don't miss it. No, I do, I do miss it. I miss it so much, and I don't know what to do about it. It was one of my, fa my, my mom used to buy it by the, I think they make a, um, a, a dairy-free one by Silk. Silk egg, S-I-L-K, you can get 
excuse me, in the States. Perhaps, can you get that brand in Europe, Asia, whoever, wherever you're watching this from? I remember she got that for me once too. You know my mom? My mom, tough love, kind of like Orlin, but still very, very giving when it came to food. Always, if you want something to eat, she'll get it for you. And so, you know, the eggnog, every Christmas for like four weeks, that whole time frame was chugging down egg down, eggnog by the half, half gallon size. I can't believe I've eaten half of this already. Let me show you. It's so gooey and sticky. Remember it was up to here? Well, you can't really see it because it's on a slope, but it was up to here. Now it's down to here. And half of it. Oh, wow. This might be dinner too. <laughs> Leftovers. I'm almost done. I'm getting really full, but I just want to answer a few of your snaps. I'm on Snapchat, Nikocado, Avocado, and I just want to answer a few of them. So I don't really know what to expect. They're all right here, and I'll show you a bunch of snaps. So I'm just going to open a few of them. Look at that. They're eating with me. I don't really know what it says all the way from back here. It says, I like to keep it simple, but this one is one of my favorites. Oh, they're making the, the ramen with me. This person says, do I want to be pizza for Halloween? Please focus. Okay, look what this person said. That says something about pizza. Okay, here's some some Asian goodies. I'm gonna add this pepper jack cheese. Don't judge me. By the way, guys, this ramen is so expensive. It's um four pack for five dollars. <gasps> yeah, oh, me. that's very expensive. That moment where garlic splatters everywhere and into my hair. So yes, I had garlic go into my hair. Okay, I thought you guys would be asking me questions, but then again, I didn't really ask for questions. Okay, this is a shout out to Brittany Lou Who 8 and she says, I watch all your mukbangs at least five times each. <gasps> Why? You only eat three times a day, what? <laughs> Maybe she's like me and she's a sloth and she likes to eat a lot. Well, thank you so much, Brittany Lou Who 8 and we also have, oh, oh, it's a schloss. That's me with long hair. That's me if I was a female hanging with a sloth. Oh, I'm gonna say, oh, this comes from Scylla37, C-I-L-L-A underscore three seven. Oh my gosh, I'm like so full, I don't. Well then again, when you go to a restaurant, they don't bring you out the whole pan that they use to serve five people, so. I ate three people's worth. <sighs> I don't know. Okay, well, that's actually all the snaps we're showing, because some of them wouldn't have made sense, because it's like conversations. I respond to all my snaps, by the way. I'm really good about that. Now, hopefully, I can keep up my game, <clears throat> but if I start getting too many snaps, it's going to be really hard to answer all of them. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, anyways, I hope you guys have a really, really good... <clears throat> Oh my god. Well, I hope you guys have a really good day today. I hope you try making this, and if you do, tell me about it. More than tonight, we have to perfect that bean paste, though. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Food come up. Um, <laughs> now I get do now this is when the th this is when the mukbang gets really interesting. When I'm so full that I start talking like I'm intoxicated, which I'm not. But it's like the full coma. I say coer, which call comer means food in Spanish. <laughs> Coma. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the time where my neighbor, her name was Sam, her last name, I'm not going to say. <laughs> not the Sam that I dated, that was a boy Sam. This is a girl Sam. And Sam and I, we had fun times because she was a foodie like me. We all have those friends that, oh my gosh, you know when you go out to the movies or you go to the mall or you go shopping, or you just get together for brunch or cafe something, I don't know. But you have those friends that eat very small amounts and it kind of puts you puts you back, excuse me, a little bit. Like for example, I remember having this one friend, I'm not gonna say her name, but you know, we used to hang out in college and I would be like, I'll have two double cheeseburgers, cheeseburgers and a side of fry and a soda please. And she's like, I'll have a Diet Coke and the Caesar salad. And you're just like, uh, ugh. now I feel like, Mr. Piggly Wiggly over here trying to stuff this down my face and you're over there having leaves. Well, anyways, my friend Sam, the neighbor, 
she liked to eat like me. So I remember one time Sam and I ordered Chinese food and you know that saying, never go shopping while you're hungry. Well, never ever order while you're hungry too, especially it's delivered. You can't really see the portion sizes and your tummy is speaking louder than your mind. So we ordered like 30 or $40 worth of Chinese food for just two of us. We got the chicken and the soup and the wonton soup and the, the stir fry, the vegetables and the side of white rice and fortune cookies. And we had like four different kinds of chicken. We had the sweet and sour chicken. We had the teriyaki chicken. We had the, I don't even know the other kinds of chicken. We, I remember at the end, we basically turned on the TV and we sat down on the couch and we ate and we ate and we were laughing at us. Oh, those biscuits. What are they? Oh, those pastries, they're like, they're sugary buns. What, <gasps> you guys that eat Chinese food, you know what I'm talking about, the sugary buns. Oh, they were so sugary, oh. Anyways, so at the end, okay, she has a, she has a cat. I don't know if the cat is still alive. Her name was Cloud, Cloudy. And she was a little on the heavier side. She was, she was, you know, she was big boned, as they like to say, you know. And so the cat would literally be like this on the floor, you know and its stomach hanging out. <laughs> Obviously, no, the cat didn't eat the Chinese food with us, but just after its regular meals. And Sam, you know, she's like, Miss Cloudy's on a diet. You know, they would give her like this much and they would like measure it out in a measuring cup and be like, there, that's your dinner. And she was still a little big boned. So anyways, the, the cat would lay down and like digest like this. And at the end, we were just like the cat. And we were like, ugh. And we were laughing so hard. I remember saying like, Sam, oh my gosh. I'm so full, I can't stop laughing. Like, all the blood leaves your head. I'm sorry if that's a trigger word for people, the B word. All the bees leave your head and go down to the, to the stomach. Oh, I'll never food. That was a fun food coma. We just laughed and giggled about the craziest, littlest things out there, you know. Food coma, that's what I feel right now. Nope, no snaps. Nobody loves me. I sent a snap. I was, I was, I was holding the phone like this and I took a picture. <laughs> okay, I need to I need to say bye bye. I need to say ciao because ah, Jia Jia Mian is making me feel a little interesting. Hi, off Jia 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 Mian. Jar Jar Banks. When's the next Star Wars come out? Does anyone know? Okay, one more bite for everybody. One more bite for the Koreans. Thank you for your food. I am very happy. Thank you. This bite is for the Koreans and for all humanity. This, this bite is for all of you on a diet. If you're on a diet, if you're eating saltine crackers with tomato juice, if you're eating little slim fast bars and shakes, that was a motorcycle. This is for you. <laughs> mm. For the people, for the people. For the people, for the people. Mmm. For the people. It's good people, yes. Very good. Ah, well, this was a very fun mukbang. Thank you guys so much for watching my mukbang. And thank you for eating with me. If you ate with me, don't forget to write down below. Right now, tell me what you had. <clears throat> and maybe you'll make some other people. They're good the motorcycles. Making some other people jealous, you know. <clears throat> I know I made lots of Koreans jealous. But obviously, you don't have to be Korean to eat Korean food, just like you don't have to be American. Oh, I did get a snap. This comes from Aska Afraf. Literally, A A Q S A Asqua S S A A K A S Q A. Let's see what they said before. Hurry up before we close the doors. Is there a video going up today? <clears throat> Says Aska Asfra. There is. <clears throat> well, if you watch this on a diet, seriously, I am so sorry. I am. It's like Paula Deen when she made her apology. Shaking her head. I am so sorry, y'all. I ask for forgiveness. You know, body language 101. Put something in your comment. I appreciate all your comments mean a lot, so leave them. And I'm gonna go lay down and stretch out like Cloudy the Cat and enjoy my food coma. Thank you so much for, oh, double chin, holy. I need like a chin strap. Uh, you know, I was, you know, watching Nadia's vlog the other day when I was in the background with Orlin and like five times I'd be like, oh, my chin, oh, my chin, oh, my chin. And you know, everyone, most people don't even notice it, but I notice it. You know, it's like if you have, you have a mole or a bad eyebrow or like, you know, I don't know, a crookedy tooth. You know, you notice before other people notice. But anyways, 
you guys i'll see you tomorrow thank you so much if you like to give it a thumbs up so i know that you liked it and i'll see you tomorrow have a really good day and try to make this judge i'm young so that is all my little sloths i will see you later bye bye okay <laughs> i'm so full oh i am so well i want to know how i feel Oh. I wanna know how I do. The ants go marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching three, three. The little ones stop to take up. Beep, 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 beep. And they all go marching down to the ground to get the out of the rain. Bum, 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 bum. Yum, bum, bum, bum.